What's up, insiders? Today we're going to be going over a big boy RTA. We're talking about the Voltrov Mini V2. Let's get down and dirty. Let's go over the Voltrov Mini V2. Before we get into the video, make sure you check out our new merch site. You can get my tagline on a shirt or a hoodie. All right, insiders, let's get into this Voltrov Mini V2. Now, I got the gold one, and I absolutely hate gold atomizers, but I got this on sale a few months ago for like $40 or $45, and by the time I got there, all the other colors were gone. All I could get was gold. So I figured out, ah, what the hell, at that price, who's going to complain, right? On top, right here, you can see you got a little bit of a curvy drip tip. Really, really comfortable, man. Definitely been digging that drip tip. It's a little tight, man. It's definitely in there. It's an 810 style drip tip. All your other goons will fit fine, but I don't know why you'd replace it because this is one of the most comfortable drip tips I ever used. I really like it. You can see some Voltrov branding on top. The threading on here is absolutely buttery, buttery smooth. I mean, just a phenomenal job they did on the threading. The machining overall on this whole thing is phenomenal. Got a little O-ring over there to keep your juice at bay. You got a recessed fill port over here. You know, air can escape on the other side while you're filling on one side. Big wide bore chimney. These fill ports will accommodate any bottle out there, no problem. I mean, you can even take those bottles with the drippers. It's what I do sometimes, and I just pour it in. I don't even use the glass dripper. I just pour it in straight from the bottle. That's how big those fill ports are. They're nice. Again, machining on this is absolutely second to none. I mean, this thing is just buttery, buttery smooth. Now I have the shorty glass installed. Later on in the video, I'm gonna show you how I take the tall glass off and put the shorty glass in. But right now, there's your airflow right there. You can see you got that kind of graded look over there, all right? Now this airflow control ring is definitely on the tight side, so much so you gotta really twist it. That's my only big con with this, is the airflow control ring. I mean, it is tight. But now you can see there's your smaller airflow right there. I got to be honest, that's the one I run most of the time. This one is just a little too big for me. If this was my only airflow, I'd probably close this off like three quarters. But why do that when I can run this airflow? So that's kind of nice. But this control ring, it doesn't matter what you do to it, man. You could juice it up all you want. This thing is stiff, man. It's tight. The good news is, though, once you set it where you like it, you don't got to worry about it moving. So I guess that's a good point on that, all right? See that lock right there? That's your juice flow control. We haven't seen that in a bit. See that little dot right there? That's where you got to put your locking symbol in order to get it to lock. This one is still a little stiff, but not nearly as bad as the airflow control ring. Now you see it with the dot, it's actually locked right now. So that's what you do when you fill it up. You shut off the juice flow control and then you open it up and let that juice get to your wicks. On the bottom here, you can see we have some Voltrov branding with a serial number. I got number 87. That is a silver plated 510 connection. There is an insulator ring around it and stainless steel threading around that. Now, in order to get to your deck, you just give it a twist on the bottom here. And again, you're gonna hear a little squeaking because I just washed this tank, so there's no juice on it but the threading is extremely smooth, okay? You pop it out like that, okay? And this is your base part. Notice the 510 goes through the base, okay? And here is your deck right here. Now we're gonna get to the deck in a minute. I just wanna show you the inside of the chimney so you can see all that airflow in there. And it does have a conical design, kind of like a conical stepped up design. These holes right here are where your juice is gonna flow from, okay? And then they're gonna come up underneath the coil and they're gonna hit the cotton that's sitting in this deck. Now, let me put this thing on the stand so I can show you what I'm moment out at, all right? I'm moment out at 0.16. Let's make sure there's no hot spots. Looks like we're glowing evenly from the inside out. Now, this is a velocity style deck. There's no reason for me to get in there and build it. You know, we've all built on this deck before. You access the grub screws from the side. The grub screws are a very high quality. Really, really nice job on that. You got these little notches. I don't know if you can see that little notch right there, right? 
that notch coincides with this little notch right there. And that's how you know your deck is installed correctly. So now that the coils are all pulsed out, we're oming out at 0.17 right now. Let me show you how to wick this thing. Take your cotton, make one end pointy, and pull it right through. Hear that? That's how you want it. You want it nice and tight, just like that. All right, now what you want to do is you want to take your cotton and you want to cut it right by that second O-ring, right there. You don't need you don't need long wicks on this, and I'm going to show you in a second why, okay? Again, cut it right by that second O-ring. Boom. Okay? Now, we make a point again, and we do the same thing on the other side. Hear that? That's the tension you want. Now we can use our other cotton as a guide if we want to. Just cut it even with that, and the same thing over here. Now, before I tuck the wicks in, I want to show you the bottom of the deck. See those holes there? That's what's going to feed your juice to the cotton. You do not want to jam the cotton in those holes. You want to kind of lay it right on top of those holes. This is very much like an aromamizer deck, or, or some of you older vapors might remember the Org Vape Boreas. Very similar type of deck. So what you want to do is you just want to take your cotton... And you just want to tuck it in there nice and gently, man. Just nice and gently underneath, just like that. Same thing on the other side. Tuck it in there. Don't go crazy. Don't stuff it. You want the cotton to, like, kind of meet in the middle of the coil, but it's got to be laying on top of that deck. Same thing on the other side. Just pop it in there. Tuck and roll. Just like that. Same thing here. Tuck and roll. And you see that? See how that's laying? Now, let me show you the bottom so you understand what I'm talking about. See how the cotton is just blocking those holes? It's not coming through. You don't want to stuff that cotton through that hole because you'll get nothing but dry hits. And that's how it should look, just like that. Now we're going to juice this thing up. Juice we're using today is Nom Nom Mango Sticky Rice. Man, if you like sticky rice, it's a, it's a Thai dessert. If you like sticky rice in real life, try this juice out. It is spot on, fantastic. One of my favorite juices. Every time I see this, I buy it. It is phenomenal. Let's take our Nom Nom sticky rice and let's wet those coils up. Let's get that cotton nice and wet. Get everything nice and saturated. That's how we want it, man. I wish you were here and you could smell this juice. This juice smells fantastic. Now let's make sure we got vape. We have vapor. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find our little notch right there, right? And we're going to take the notch here and we're going to line it up and pop it in there so it seats well. See how that seats? That's exactly how you want it to sit. All right. Definitely like that. Got a little juice on my finger. I'll lube up those threads a little bit. All right. And that's how you wick and install the deck. Now we take our base. We put it on there. A little reverse thread so it catches. And look how nice that goes on. I mean, it's just beautiful. Threading on this is second to none. Now we took our juice flow control and see how we have it closed. That's what you want to do when you're about to fill it up. We're going to take our top cap off, and now it's time to fill this thing up with some sticky rice goodness. Get that all filled up. There we go. Now we take our top cap, screw it on, put our drip tip back in, and now it's time to release the juice. Boom. Just like that, and you see the bubbles coming up, right? See that? Now you know you're wicking good. So that's it, insiders. That's how you wick this thing up. Let me show you how to swap the big glass out for the small glass now, all right? Take this part off like that. Take the glass section. You want to take this section right here, this chimney extender, and you want to take it off like that. So now you take your shorty chimney and you put it right in there just like so. Screw it in there. Don't screw it in there too tight. And then you put your glass section on. And now you take your top section right here and you screw that on. Make sure it's nice and tight. And there you go. Now you put your 
base back in. Make sure you line up those notches like I showed you, just like that. And then you put your base back on. And now you're ready to fill it up and vape. Here is the small glass for 8 mil mode. To be honest with you, I've been running it in that mode because I have no use to run it in 11 ml mode. But let me show you the spare glass that you get for 11 mil mode. All right. And that's also the glass you get pre-installed as well. In the spare parts bag, you get a bunch of spare deck screws, plenty of spare O-rings, a chimney piece for the shorty glass, and a hex key. All right, insiders, let's get into those cons and pros. First con is going to be, this is just an old school velocity style deck. Mm. It's kind of old hat. You know what I mean? It's not terrible, but it's nothing really innovative. I got to point that out. That might annoy some people. Another con is going to be in 11 ml mode and big boy mode. The flavor definitely suffers. Mm. I got to point that out. And the last con is going to be that AFC ring, mm. that AFC adjustment. It's a little bit on the tight side, and I've been using this thing for months, and it's still tight. I mean, I'd rather it be tight than loose, but it's just a little too tight. I thought it would have loosened up a bit by now. It has not. It's a little bit of a con. But that's it on the cons. Let's move on to the pros, because we got some pros on this one. First pro is going to be, man, machining on this thing. You saw it down low. It is Stella. Awesome job on that, Voltrov. Both types of 810 drip tips fit in here. You can use the smoke styles with the O-ring on the outside, or you could use the goon style with the O-ring on the inside. It don't matter. They both fit. Nice job. Awesome, awesome flavor, especially in shorty mode. The flavor on this thing is just banging. Juice flow control, man. This thing's got juice flow control. I haven't seen that in a while. I like it. It's a pro. Smooth, smooth airflow. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I got it wide open on the smaller hole, right? Check this out. Just sounds smooth, man. That thing's smooth. Real nice job on that. You can get some big coils in here. That's a pro. Wide airflow range. You can go from super loose to a nicely restrictive DL hit. I like that type of range. I run it on the smaller, on the smaller hole wide open, and I've been enjoying the hell out of this tank. This thing is a legit cloud chucker. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I got a 0.18 build in here right now, running it at 98 watts. Check out some of the cloudage. No doubt about it, man. This thing puts out. This thing's easy to build and wick. It's a pro. I love, love, love the grub screws on this thing. They're high quality and hard to strip. I like when companies take care of little things like that. Pro. Silver plated 510 pin. I like it. And the last pro is going to be at the price point I got this at, and I doubt you'll be able to find it at this price point, but at $45, this thing was a screaming deal. So that's it on the cons and pros insiders. Let's talk about this one a little bit. This one reminds me a lot of the Aromamizer Plus. Has a very, very similar style vape to it. The airflow might actually be a little smoother. The flavor might be a little better. The machining on it is definitely better. I think if you shop around, you can find this thing right now for around 60 bucks. And while that might be a lot to some people for a tank, I'm telling you, for the build quality and the vape quality that you get on this tank, it's well worth 60 bucks. This one is Deuces Jack approved. Got a little bit of a story. You guys like my stories, right? Let me tell you a quick one, all right? So a friend of mine who's a reviewer, MJag, right? He writes reviews. He messages me and he's like, you know, this was like a few months ago. He's like, Jack, the Voltrov Mini V2 is on sale for $45. It's like an $80 tank. I'm like, cool, who's got it? He sends me the link. I go and I buy it from Voltrov, all right? About a half hour later, I get a shipping notice, and the shipping notice is shipping it to some, I don't know what address. I don't even think it was in New York. Or it might have been in New York, but it wasn't even in my borough. I don't know how the hell they got this address. So only a half hour passed, right? So I'm like, shit, let me, let me, let me see if I can get somebody via email and get them to correct this thing before it goes out. So I send an email saying, hey, I don't know how this happened, but you guys got the wrong address, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? The guy answers me. His name is Matt. He's like, listen, we can't do anything. Post office already picked it up. 
you know, sorry about that. I don't know how it happened, but you know what we're going to do? We're going to send you out another one right away. He says, the only thing that's going to be different is you're going to be a day late on shipping because then you're going to be able to pick it up till tomorrow. Let me confirm the address with you. I was like, wow, man, that's kind of cool that this guy did this. You know what I mean? He, he saw the problem, jumped right on it and took care of it and made me feel like a valued customer. And I like to point that out when companies do that. Then he says to me, Jack, I hope if this thing does find its way to you somehow that you're actually going to send it back. And I'm like, listen, man, I don't know how this thing's going to find its way to me because I don't even recognize that address. I don't even know if that street exists in my borough. But I promise you, you have my word as a man that if that thing makes it my way, I will absolutely send it back to you. So long story short, you know, company screwed up because, I, you know, I think this was all done via PayPal. So all the addresses were automatic. So I don't think it was any mistake on my end. Even if it was, they did the right thing and sent the stuff out quickly. I was only delayed by a day. I got to give Voltrov props. Awesome, awesome job, guys. Customer service like that is an asset to this community. I kill companies on customer service when it's bad. I, at the same time, I got to point it out when it's great. And I think Matt from Voltrov did an awesome job. So thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for watching the video, Insiders. Definitely appreciate it. Remember, we're not a monetized channel, so we'd appreciate it if you check out our new merch store. You can get my tagline on a shirt like you see me wearing, or you can get it on a hoodie as well. We have some other great designs that you can put on a t-shirt or a hoodie. Here's another one of them, Vape King shirt. And here's one of my personal favorites, Vape So Hard, the FDA Wanna Find Me. Go over to our new store and check it out. And that's it, insiders. That's all I got for you today. You keep living that vape life. We're out of here. Deuces.